look at that huge double kidney for the new BMW sports car. 5.5 seconds in the acceleration figure in the top sports model. Wait a minute. The sports car? Is it a hot hatch? No, this is the all new generation of the BMW 2 Series Active Tourer. It's their compact family van, so to speak. But they try everything to get rid of this image, make it sportier, especially here in the M Sport line, yet at the same time more usable on the interior, even with the BMW iX inspired interior of the flagship EV model. Will this work? Will it be the best compact van out there? Or maybe even the best overall BMW to buy? We will find out here with Thomas and Auto Gefühl. Let's start here in the front, M Sport line. This is the sporty trim. You can see here not only the huge double kidney closed at the moment, it will open on demand if more cooling is needed. Sporty lower style honeycomb structure in black. Also big design element here. Then LED signature, really beautiful and modern. LED or also optional matrix LED are available. And in the side profile, well, it's four meters 39 or 173 inches. So it's really compact dimensions. However, the car is a little bit wider, a little bit longer than the previous generation. Wheels come from 16 to 19 inch. These here are good compromise, 18 inch, maybe good compromise of being sportiness and comfort. In this side profile here, you can see it, everything aerodynamically optimized. Also these door handles, they go out to the top a little bit. And you can get for the M Sport swim here automatically then an adaptive suspension, 15 millimeters lower. Otherwise you go with the base suspension and we'll test this one here today. Very interesting. Engines also soon more deals to come. You can see here in the side line, chrome frames. In this case, you can also get a shadow line if you like and quite strong hip area here for that compact van. But indeed, when you look at this from the outside, especially in the M Sport trim, it rather looks like a hot hatch indeed. So indeed on paper, it's the most boring BMW model from their model lineup. But you can see here, even in the rear, it continues to be quite exciting for this model segment here. New tail limbs, everything horizontally drawn, really nice with this matte styling. And then in the M Sport trim, you also have more dark accentuations, even sporty here in that lower trim with this stamped in feature and a huge diffuser style here. And there is no job for the Auto Gefühl fake exhaust police. They did not go for fake exhaust, kept it all clean. So I think this is a very good decision indeed. Overall, styling-wise, would like to know your comments. What do you think? Does it work? Do you think it looks like a compact van or do you think it's more like hot hatch? For me, I think, I think it's the best you can design in this segment here to make it a sporty appeal and to get rid of a boring image. I think that's well done. And here we have a white vehicle for you as a different choice. What do you think? Which color more beautiful? And also this is the luxury line. So from the base level, either the luxury line, more elegant or the M Sport and Sportier here. The luxury line doesn't have these sporty accentuations here, more subtle, more elegant in the lower part. Also here, different styling for the lower bumper and so on. We also have the 18 inch wheels here, but in a different styling. Overall, I have to say, the M Sport does the car so well, because here in the luxury line, yeah, it again just looks, yeah, of course not that aggressive, but I think when you put this vehicle here in that sporty trim we had there in a Portimao Blue, it looks so much better, doesn't it? Or what do you think? And this is Skyscraper Grey here once again with the M Sport package. And this also has the extended shadow lines. So we can see here the vertical fins in the double kidney are also blacked out. And also once again with this black element in the lower area. In this case also when you have the shadow line, you can see that the side windows also have the frames around right here. So this is then the you know, most sinister look for it. A beautiful key design here and also in the M Sport and with the M colors. Then here the door handles, you can see here how they fold out. They really give you a good haptic feedback as well. Then door closing is okay, but I, we heard better ones definitely. Then inside of the doors, we can see here is a sensor tackle leatherette cover, even softer than here for your elbows. To me, it makes a good build quality impression also here inside door handle. And this is the optional Harman Kardon sound system, which indeed has a great sound. I really, really love that. Then the M Sport also has this M Sport entry badge right here. And also these aluminum inspired pedals. 
Tesla also gets the special M Sport steering wheel. Look at that here with these holes and new controls at the steering wheel itself with real buttons. Yes, so not everything capacitive BS, you know, hashtag capacitive BS is always a good hashtag when we see something like this, but not in this case then. Usually there's a base seat available and then this is the optional M Sport seat with more shoulder support, both versions. So base and this sport seat are now wider, so even fits better for taller people and so on. It's really cool. Here the M Sport seat has a combination of inside Alcantara microfiber and outside Sensor Tech leatherette, so completely animal free seat. And even the base seat is available either fabric base version or in the luxury line. You can also get a full Sensor Tech in bright black or beige even perforated. So great offerings here of sustainable materials and wow I mean this is the sport seat you know and it's super comfortable so and indeed it's actually quite wide you feel like you would be in a bigger vehicle and this is really this is a very short car actually very compact dimensions but the seating comfort is awesome also here in the shoulder area a lot of great support this is one of the rare seats where you know, usually you stand or you sit on the sofa or so and it's always more comfortable than getting in a car. But this is one of the rare seats where you take a seat and say, like, I actually feel more comfortable than I was before when not being in the car, you know? So really astonishing. For the steering wheel, they do not have any alternative materials yet. That's one thing that is missing, but the styling of the series is really awesome. Again, this DM styling and here up and down, in and out and so on. And soon more deals about these displays. You always have this curved display with two screens actually. But before that, I want to take a look at exterior versus interior concept basically, because you see here this front A pillar. This is very interesting. It's really flat to enable a very sporty design and they put this one actually more to the front to achieve this sporty roof line without putting this one here lower because then you would have lost headroom. However, this has one drawback and the thing is that the head-up display cannot be projected into the front screen. The head-up display is an option inside the BMW Live cockpit. And then you have this, you know, this rather old school separate layer, plexiglass layer. It's okay, but the speed you see like rather here and not way in the front like with a real head-up display. But the thing is, they could have fitted space-wise a head-up display unit here like a proper one. But indeed, because the front screen is like roundly curved and too flat, the projection is not possible. So this was a decision between we want a sportier design on the exterior, but not lose headroom. And then the consequence of that is you only have this basic head-up display. My tip would be just don't order as, a, as an option. The instruments here are just fine. By the way, if you adjust the steering wheel here with the manual adjustment, then be gentle and hold your hand underneath it and then make it slowly like this. Because this spring there, which is you know, built in there, is so powerful that in, you know, in some cars you just snap it down with your thumb and then I'm just really careful, then this happens. Bam! And you know, <laughs> when you snap it down, and then maybe you have the other finger here, but not touching it directly, you really hurt yourself. Um, it's not that it would have happened to me earlier. Um, yeah. <laughs> and here we do have the luxury line with the same sport seat as a form, however, different material. This is the perforated sensor tech material, so it's animal free, less resource use in the production. And here also perforation in the inside, so it's more breathable, although it's a slick material and can be wiped clean. Also looks really cool, feels really good and very soft also, so very high quality. And as for the seating comfort, well, as the seat form is the same as in the other seat, it's also really good for the comfort. The material mm, also feels very soft. Maybe the microfiber would be a little bit cozier in winter time, for example. Um, but since it's perforated here, it's also good for the breathability. Overall, if you ask me, I think I would still pick the microfiber. Of course, if you have a base entry level version, then you would have a different seat form, base seat and also fabric is available then when you want to keep the price a little bit lower. Here in the luxury line, what we also have is here, this matte wood interior. This is of course also the more elegant styling. 
but this one also yeah looks and feels really amazing and here we have the center tech seats in black if you rather want it a little bit more subtle also once again here with that perforation in the interior overview really clean layout once again with this curved screen atmosphere sensor tech dashboard here available for the m sports line also soft touch of great build quality everywhere this is really impressive and again very good overview here still manual buttons the only thing really i would like manual climate knobs but however considering its a solution in the touchscreen it's relatively easy to access actually so overall a very impressive interior i think you've maybe already seen this interior is indeed inspired by the big ev flagship model bmw ix you can see here this folds up but then this flying middle console here this is indeed almost the same in the BMW iX, so really impressive, although we're in a different segment here. You have the gear selector right here, really small and space saving. And it looks like this for all models because no matter which engine you have, always the new seven speed dual clutch transmission. You can pick the drive modes, still a manual volume jog here. That's good to have. And then cup holders, not adaptive though. That's maybe one catch to USB-C chargers. And then here in the front, this is basically the seat belt for your smartphone. So you fold this one like this, and then you have the inductive charging right here. And then that it, you know, is being kept tight, doesn't fly around and also touches the inductive charging surface. So here, when the car is on, Schmoozy is also recharging. <laughs> and the funny thing here as well is, when you take a closer look right here, maybe I also make you, um, you know, some more light. This is very interesting. Look at that. These two holes there, these are actually ventilation holes for the inductive charging for your smartphone. So the air has been sucked out from behind so your smartphone doesn't get hot. Has been a problem with BMWs in the past that they got too hot in the inductive charging pads no more now digital instruments you can change the content how you want to have that one if you have a root set you can also put the map in there map in there <laughs> or here the I mean, apple carplay information and then you can also change the whole layout like this maybe a little bit different or um, yeah but overall clear to read and the good thing is it is standard these digital instruments and now here as a premiere Hardly ever we've seen it here. When we have, you know, in the CarPlay and Maps, we have a root set here, and then we can now also see that on the digital instruments. Yes, the CarPlay mirror maps right here. So this is not the BMW map, really cool. However, this is now Google Maps on the CarPlay, and there you can see it just says root guidance via Apple CarPlay Active. This does not work. So here in the instruments, either the BMW internal GPS or via Apple CarPlay, the Apple Maps app, but not Google Maps. Well, you've seen here, Apple CarPlay already. Android Auto is also available here in this BMW OS 8. It is to me a little bit more complicated than OS 7. Climate control is here via touch. I'm not a big fan of that. I'd rather prefer real climate knobs, but here it's it always stays that way. Here, however, to um, activate then the, the steering wheel heating, for example, or the seat heating, I think that's too complicated. So, not really th think that this is easier than before. And here, also no physical keys. You have here this you know rather known menu right here. This is then the BMW internal GPS system. Hasn't changed much. Overall, the software is actually quite good. But as I said, I found the OS 7 less complicated nice visualizations here as well but what about you do you think this version here is better now than before here this main menu is by the way also available here but whoa that's um also a lot actually um also shows the carplay maps directly here in the same um, you know level than the car internal apps that's also very interesting here and when you use android auto you can also do that. And by the way, some of us like to drive without AC. So with ventilation, yes, but without AC, so the air in the car doesn't get that dry. And here you can see there is no functionality to turn off the AC function. And what about the voice input? Hey, BMW, I'm cold. Okay, 
I will increase the temperature. It will be more comfortable shortly. Let oh. me know if it gets too warm for you. Oh, wow. Thank you so much. And uh, um, we, let me try it one more time. Is BMW better than Mercedes? You should listen to this for real. You should listen to this for real? Hmm. Referring to the sound or what? Look at the camera system. When I have the 360 view and I put in reverse gear, there it is. Look at that. They even thought in the visualization about that the rear parking or the reverse parking lamps get activated. These are details we really appreciate definitely. And here you have the matrix view. So you can check for glitches in the matrix and have all the way 360 degree around view. This is an option. The base rear view camera, of course, is also available. You can switch it here around. This is, for example, the normal rear view camera with a great resolution as well. And here we have the augmented reality GPS guidance, having this lower arrow then showing you where to get out of the roundabout. You also have higher arrows, especially on motorway situations. They also show which lane to take. It's actually a pretty helpful feature. Comes together with the BMW Live Cockpit Professional, where you also then have the head display. Head up display, where it is on that separate layer, you can put different contents on that too. <sighs> However, it's not really that much in your line of sight. I think I can easily live without it. Well, and look at that here in the top ceiling in the front. Very visible also here a well, security camera spying on us. So our cameraman Cornelius suggested that one of the engineers actually suggested this one here as a rear view camera and meanwhile got fired. Well, but the real solution is it is the interior camera, which you can actually supervise with the BMW app remotely. And then you can see this picture here of uh, Cornelius and me. So either you can watch them via the app, maybe is there something going on in your vehicle and you can also here, um, for example, take a photo of us and you have it here and you can um, yeah, share it, for example. But wait a minute, you could also actually just take your smartphone and take a photo of yourself. Hmm. Rear seating area, this is very exciting indeed. And we have, when we have the M Sports package here, also the beautiful Alcantara. And then we can move the seat bench forward like this. You can see this then the maximum difference. So that's actually very substantial. So you can have more trunk or more lengthier as for seating area. And you also fold the seats from here like this or then adjust that angle more upright like this or more than in the back position and so on. And here in the middle part, we have cup holes, which are also adaptive. You know, good that the kids don't spill that thing that, uh, that easily. So when I get inside, these sports seats are actually quite thick here in the front area. However, more legroom now in this generation. And even, you know, if I have a tall person right here, enough legroom. So this is really cool should be more legroom with uh, base seats as well. Then uh, let's see about the headroom. Yeah, one with A6 or 6 with 1, still enough headroom left. One catch here, the back part, I mean, we're in the premium segment here and this will not be a cheap car. For a BMW, however, reasonably priced and the inside of the doors is hard pack. That's the thing. But you have more Harman Kardon speakers here also in the rear. That's of course, you know, in the, this, you know, nice jacket design. Here in the middle part, you do have this middle tunnel here. And then also, you know, some space here, you two USB C chargers. But overall, very comfortable, pretty cozy here in the rear, and also enough space. Once again, we have to remember this is a car which has a very short length. And considering for that, great comfort here in the rear and also enough room. The beautiful blue here, by the way, is called Portimar Blue. Well, typical Thomas Blue here in Autogefühl, but they didn't want to call it Thomas Blue. You know, licensing issues. <laughs> An electric hatch here is standard. And you always have more than a little bit more than 400 liters of boot capacity here between this and this. Below the car is very interesting. In the combustion engine then, 70 liters more. When you have the mild hybrid combustion engine like here, this area is closed and you only have this small area. Also, the plug-in hybrid has the case here. The crucial thing is above here, you always have the same height. That's cool. Length is either 80 centimeters or 30 inches, but then you, you can see you can vary that rear bench. And then you, for example, have it a little bit longer here or maybe even longer when you put that back part of the seat more upright and then you can 
make it like 10 centimeters or five inches longer. The height here in centimeters, by the way, below the cover is 43 centimeters or 17 inches. And you can see here all the backpacks and the bags and so on, they fit in easily. And what, when we fold the seats, we have to do it from here and I leave the seat as I would be driving and the maximum length, this is of course really crucial then for a lot of you guys and you always tell me that this is one of the favorite things here with our classic ruler and this is then here around 1 meter 65 or 65 inches. Front wheel driven platform but all wheel drive for all engine concepts available. There's a 2 liter 4 cylinder diesel or here the 2 liter 4 cylinder turbo petrol engine. This one here, the 223i, seven seconds around in the acceleration figure, optional also the X drive, all wheel drive. And then there's also the 1.5 liter three cylinder turbo petrol engine, either pure combustion or based on that one, the plug in hybrid drivetrain, 14 kilowatt hours net capacity of the battery, and then 5.5 seconds in the acceleration figure for the 230e, that's the top acceleration model, so to speak, with an electric all wheel drive then for the rear axle. We'll both drive this one here, the pure petrol, and the plug in hybrid drive train today for you. Welcome to Thomas' Driving Lounge with the BMW 2 Series Active Tour 223i. This is the 2 liter 4 cylinder turbo petrol engine. However, here we're with the front wheel drive. And we start here with some winding roads because, well, the exterior promised so much sportiness. We have the M Sport here with the adaptive suspension. It's 50 millimeters lower, but then can also vary in the dampening so it will both bring more comfort and more sportiness in comparison to the base suspension and indeed it's on the one end very smooth so it's not too uncomfortable not too stiff but at the same time the car stays upright and feels very very good in the handling it is a short vehicle compact dimensions and the steering feels also quite natural once again, it feels better than in the BMW 3 Series and the 4 Series. So this platform here obviously offers the better BMW steering feeling, which I still don't understand why the 3 Series is not steering benchmark at BMW, but here very natural, very precise. So I'm very happy with the steering and the steering wheel, the M Sport steering wheel. It's also pretty cool, good and thick grip. Yo, thick grip, yo. <laughs> yeah, and here we can also go a little bit faster. Wow, going here left and right, yeah, that really feels very good. And the trunk, I think you know, some, some luggage is flying around, maybe like... Now I flipped it around. Ah, now it's silent. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Damn you, luggage. Yeah, silence. <laughs> so, back to our vehicle, good view to the front screen definitely so this you know there's on the one hand is um yeah this this kind of traveling feeling we soon also go to the motorway and test that but on the other hand we have this sporty approach so indeed this vehicle can do both and sometimes vehicles are either boring but comfortable or sporty and uncomfortable but i mean i'm really astonished how they mastered this compromise here, especially with the M adaptive suspension. This car can indeed kind of do everything, you know. So it looks sporty on the exterior, it has a lot of space on the interior. It drives very sporty indeed. It's a lot of fun to drive and steer it around, but it's super comfortable. And a big part of that are also these seats and we talked about them earlier they are wider now at the same time here now in these corners they hold you really tight especially in that shoulder area passenger comment you're great it's, it's, it's a pleasure to sit here so when when Cornelius says directly great so sometimes when things are really awesome he's like yeah good nice and he now this time like great so that means a lot, that means yes, a lot, so even yeah, back. <laughs> Cornelius is not easily impressed, so um, yeah, so yeah, definitely good for, for the backs, we're both quite tall and um, yeah, 
that's so much fun and you really forget that you would oh i'm driving like the compact van segment and isn't it just maybe like a family thing no you totally forget that when you drive this vehicle especially in this trim here so i can just say driving wise it's really flawless yes it is front wheel driven so when you hit the accelerator really hard and it's wet okay then you might might feel that most of the time when you're not accelerating too hard you don't feel a difference of course a rear wheel driven bmw will get you out of the corners a little bit better in the all-wheel drive versions this effect will also be taken back because you then also get punched to the rear um, yeah that's the one thing where we can say hey that's maybe not the most sporty thing yet again this has compact dimensions is smaller so uh, when you ask me like a normal bmw 3 series or this one which is more fun to drive well i mean maybe this one even so yeah i'm not missing the rear wheel drive so much although i'm really a rear wheel driven uh, platform lover but because the handling is so balanced here yeah that is that is really something you know some things <laughs> when driving controlling the temperature unit for example while driving it's okay here you know with the touch screen but i would like to, uh, to have some menu dials that's maybe the one thing and i would like to have a real head display it was not possible as i told you earlier but besides that it's really tough to find anything which is not ideal with this vehicle um yeah maybe in normal driving mode he could a little bit use a little more feedback here in the steering let's see when we go to the driving mode sport mode yeah we have to pick it in the touch screen here you know the rpns go up so we have a little bit more punch then more spontaneous reaction steering feeling yeah yeah these low areas could use a little bit more resistance but then to the side it gets definitely better ah, that must be a sound actuator yeah the sound is definitely more enhanced now in that sport mode but you know why not so um it sounds actually quite nice so there's no one behind us in the sports mode we can also do um zero to 50 acceleration for you now let's see let's just do that here oh, that's it oh that was already 60 see it, de it delays then a little bit but you see it's not the most you know spontaneous punch here with this spec here seven seconds is to 100 kilometers an hour 62 miles an hour 6.9 when you have the all-way drive so it doesn't make too big of a difference the all-way drive then is more when you live in you know, I don't know minnesota bc or in the alps region then you might need that a little bit more and of course the plug-in hybrid drivetrain with the more spontaneous acceleration then because you have this electric boost although you have the smaller engine but i'm most of the time of course always a fan of pick the highest displacement possible with the lowest horsepower figure this will be the most durable engine yeah and yeah i'm still amazed of how good the seats are the suspension how much fun it is so really there has been rarely a vehicle where you have so much driving fun but at the same time so much comfort so even you know thinking for all vehicles not only this segment this you know this sweet spot they found here is really incredible and you know i've been testing so many different cars over the years i'm really not easily impressed but this one here is very very well done and motorway driving really excellent the adaptive suspension is doing a good job keeping it all comfortable at the same time the car is not leaning at all at higher speeds or something really good lane change precise a lot of fun and all the assistance systems are also in place blind spot monitor there's a yellow triangle in the side mirror then appearing and there's also a very good and smooth lane keeping assist so here I am not steering at all at this moment here. The car is actively steering, although this motorway is quite bent. And at the same time, it's not too intrusive. 
and not like sudden and correction again very smooth indeed and also the adaptive cruise control is set here at the moment and with the mode button at the steering wheel you can switch between a speed limiter a normal cruise control and this adaptive cruise control which is keeping the distance to the car in front of us so once again although it's a small car good motorway comfort and if you would compare a BMW 1 series here is it a little, little bit more upright have this panoramic front screen so to speak you know we have a little bit more distance right here so it is indeed a nice traveling feeling here on the motorway and at the same time we have the two liter four cylinder engine here then we also have enough punch when we need some overtaking maneuvers or something Let me show you more about that so let me just manually adjust here and if we are at 85 kilometers an hour let's accelerate to 120 but let's go to the sport mode for that so enough from 80 kilometers an hour to 120 let's go Plop, that's it so quite quickly and obviously this car is really comfortable also doing that because Cornelius is cleaning his glasses <laughs> meanwhile <laughs> he's like I, I'm doing really he's like <laughs> yeah, the only thing that's irritating to me a little bit here with the My Modes button, um, I criticized that in the iX as well. You press it and then you have to select in the touchscreen. <sighs> why is that? So I kind of just, you know, press the button twice. So you're forced to hit the screen right there. In the sports mode, the RPMs are turned up a little bit higher and the dual clutch transmission is, on the one hand, hardly notable and in the sports mode you feel a little bit more than these transitions and of course main reason is that the rpms are turned up higher so once again from all the aspects combined phew, that is really very well done also as for motorway and at the same time it doesn't feel boring at all so the suspension is not too soft and Indeed, especially with the M Sports package with that adaptive suspension and having a 2 liter 4 cylinder, which is a good engine for that vehicle, definitely. Um, yeah, that makes it's actually even on the motorway is, is a lot of fun. That's pretty cool. And fuel economy for the 2 liter 4 cylinder petrol engine here, the 223i, around 6 liters on 100 kilometers, so 40 mpg US, 47 mpg UK, which is actually a pretty decent result. And now the 230e, let's go to the sport mode of this plug in hybrid, and then left pedal, we hold it for the boost mode from 60 kilometers an hour, 10 seconds boost. <laughs> oh, that was rather 50 to 90 already. Woo! Yeah, and you also heard this, you know, acoustic feedback for the boost. Wow, really impressive. So once again, it's like here, holding that left pedal that also says boost. And then you have it here, seat in the instruments for 10 seconds, have the additional boost and whoa, whew, that goes forward really quickly. So going back to our hot, hot hatch thesis, yeah, it's, I mean, this plug-in hybrid is indeed a hot hatch then. As a compact family van plug-in hybrid? Who would have thought that, you know, to, to make it that sporty? Of course, this plug-in hybrid drivetrain here will be a little bit more expensive, but then again, with some um, governmental benefits, for example, you can have savings then once again. Going back here to the normal driving mode um, the funny thing here what they have here is the, the adaptive recuperation so here when the car is in front of me so i'm running to the car lifting throttle there's recuperation so here also once again rolling when there's no one in front of me like here now there's there's enough distance then i'm rolling no recuperation but as soon as someone is closer once again See here, for example, now recuperation. I'm not braking at all. And this is a very intelligent thing indeed. So it's not set on a one pedal driving or so. That's hardly ever for, for back and hybrids. But here then you don't have to, you know, think about it basically. The car does it for you. And I think that's a very interesting choice that you have then advantages of recuperation in a way that it is activated when you need it or when you want it. 
And then again, it can be like efficient rolling using the energy you already have and being comfortable so you just can lift your foot off the throttle and the car is rolling. I think a pretty cool solution indeed. We did start with 80 kilometers or 50 miles of pure electric range in these instruments. They said actually, soon also see if this is rea really realistic. Um, let's see, we did lose 15 kilometers so far. And when we go to the menu, yeah, and this is the thing here controlling it while driving is harder in the OS8 definitely. So um, I did prefer the OS7 for that. And you also had this selector that you could also select something while driving, for example. So the live vehicle view, for example. So we did lose 15 kilometers in the instruments and we drove 16 kilometers. Yeah, so that is actually a pretty realistic figure than here so far. Very interesting. Um, yeah, and the car basically also does that for you, you know, what's that? Interesting car deco. <laughs> so you usually let the car do its thing. And when you're driving slowly and don't need much acceleration, you're driving pure electric as long as the battery is, you know, still full. And when you're driving very, very fast, then the combustion engine will take over. So top speed here around 130 or 140 kilometers an hour, depending on which drive mode you are in. If you know to that speed, the car can drive all electric. Then the combustion engine will take over definitely. And when you think about combined drivetrains, it always depends on you know on the fuel economy. You can't really say it. It really depends on how much are you using this electric drivetrain, and it makes sense when you can recharge frequently, of course. As for how it drives. It feels very nicely when it's just silent, you know? That's, that's actually a very cool feeling and it fits to the vehicle as well. So driving it all electric, commuting during the week, it's actually a cool idea. Here you can also see charging battery in that screen then. You can kind of follow it, follow what the car is doing. But most of the time, it probably it will be just too distracting. And um, yeah, let me just go back to the set nav then. The most impressive thing here about the plug-in hybrid drivetrain is indeed the boost acceleration. Other than that, it feels you know pretty normal. When you're driving all electric, of course, just this added silence or removed noise is actually very good. And of course, there's no gear transition and so on and so on. How it can also activate the combustion engine is of course with the pin down, for example here, like just to pin it down then the combustion engine is also on, for example. So there might be like an emergency situation or something. You're getting on the motorway, driving on electric and see, oh, I need to get on now. I need more power to be safely entering the motorway. And this is the reason why you have this pin down effect as the combustion engine is also being activated. I think as a long-term customer, then you won't look so much like, oh, what is the car doing when and what? You just get in the car, start driving and trust that the vehicle is doing actually the right thing and that's actually also the thing that they were aiming for with the adaptive recuperation and so on and that's also a good thing to save some energy when you are having here for example some down situation at this moment of course adaptive recuperation means it rolls but then when you want to reduce the speed you can see here how the recuperation is basically filling up something of the screen and the same for the all electric vehicles also counts for this one. First, the recuperation is being used when you hit the brake pedal. And then when you need more braking power, then the real brakes are being applied. So this one here will make sense when you will get governmental benefits for plug-in hybrid drivetrains. When you can drive all electric, for example, during the week and just need longer journeys on the weekend or something. Well, and of course, if you want the fastest version with the best boost so very interesting technology and you know which one would I take hmm. I think it's yeah it's a tough decision so this one here adds a little bit more serenity also complexity but also this technology touch because you have the electric moments and I think you can go for the plug-in hybrid if you have a good charging infrastructure at home or at work 
then it actually will make sense. So a better motorway vehicle, I actually see in the two liter four cylinder petrol engine. And when your charging infrastructure is not adequate, then probably the bigger petrol engine will be the, you know, the, the better choice overall. The difference between the all wheel drive systems is, in the pure combustion engine, it's front plus rear on demand. Here, the thing is, when you drive all electric, you have rear wheel drive. <laughs> That's a fun thing, right? But when you really pin it down, of course, both engines are being used. And then you have front combustion engine plus rear electric. Yeah, to make it rear-wheel drive again, <laughs> make BMW rear-wheel drive again, yeah, that's maybe the next marketing slogan for the compact uh, segment, then you also have to go electric. Competitors of this vehicle here, the Mercedes B-Class and the Golf Sports Van, but from what we experienced today, yeah, are these really competitors? I mean, it is, to me, the best car in the segment here, definitely, and not maybe only in the segment, it's a very, very good car overall. And it doesn't feel like a compact van, so um, what would you compare against it?